Hello YouTube, D. Bodger here. Welcome to EV Components Review. Uh, I did the build videos on this thing and it's been a little while since I did a video on uh, my spot weld shear, which I have nicknamed Mr. Snippy. Uh, you know, because it basically takes off spot weld, snip snip, and it's really quick. Um, the uh, servo one here will run off of anything from 12 to 24 volts. Uh, it definitely runs better on 24 volts, and as you can see, that's basically what I've got on my power supply. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, the, the, the higher voltage definitely makes the motor run a little bit faster, but also gives a little bit more torque, um, which you want. Uh, anyway, anyway, so yeah, 24 volt power supply, and they don't have to be anything special. You know, that's just a, a drock, uh, whatever power supply that you didn't get on Amazon for whatever they're 24 bucks, and not very much money, uh, and that's good enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, and the servos are not expensive. You can probably find them cheaper, like on AliExpress, but like on eBay, Amazon, they're like $24, $28. Um, the linear rail here, uh, so I forget the actual size of this thing. You can go check my other videos, but having the dual bearing block in here really took out any movement this way or this way uh, from when you're chopping. Um, so yeah, I definitely would recommend dual linear blocks um, to keep the rail straight and from flexing around. Um, and that little thing right there, I think it was $13, $14, something like that, pretty darn cheap. Uh, everything else was scrap aluminum I had. Uh, this was all cut on my table saw, a little bit of filing to clean up the corners. Uh, same thing with this, you know, I cut that on my table saw, drilled some holes in it, needed a tap so I could tap some threads in aluminum, and that's pretty much it. The tools involved are pretty simple, you know, cutting out this spot right here, you know, that make the little bridge like. Yeah, I did that on a bandsaw, but you could do that with a hacksaw. I could have cut it on the table saw, you know, uh, filed the corners when it was all done, cleaned up the space to make it neat. And that's pretty much it. This little piece of aluminum right here, um, I actually found it mostly bent that way. It had this part in it with this part being straight and that part. And so then I had to use, put those in a vise and bend them over. Uh, so I got that nice little shape that was then big enough in the right shape to hold my potentiometer in there for setting things. All right, so I have made a change since the last time this thing was made. And that is... Before, I only had one trimmer pot for, I think it was bottom, and not for top. Uh, so now, those two trimmer pots set my maximum and minimum stroke. And then the main pot is everything in between max and min. Uh, and so all three of those potentiometers are all in series. Uh, you know, you're just simply taking part of the total strength length, strength length and tying it up in a trimmer pot or in here. So as a result, now, all the way down, stops there. That was the way it was before with a single uh, trimmer pot, and maximum goes to there. And that's the right stroke length for 18650s or 21700s. So this is an 18650. I dropped it in there. You can see it doesn't uh, go beyond or fall underneath, which was a problem before without the max. So yeah, sometimes I turn the knob too far, and that would raise the uh, plunger or you know the linear rail too high, in which case I could put an 18650 under the blade and then accidentally lower into it and cut right through a cell. Um, so yes, this totally eliminates that problem. And if I need to adjust it for some other kind of cell, like say, you know, because this is basically optimized for 18650 or 21700, but like if I had a 26650, I probably would need to adjust the length a little bit. So little screwdriver and I can adjust max and min, you know, top and bottom and, you know, fix that in like a minute. So, uh, lots of adjustability, lots of consistency thanks to that and definitely works pretty darn good. And then of course the main trimmer pot or the main pot, you know, is everything in between. And I did experiment with a push button, uh, which I talked about in a previous video for this thing. And I didn't like it, because uh, all it would let me do was go max to min, max to min, which is most of the time what you want to do. But there are times when that's not the case. You know, you have a particular spot weld that's being cantankerous, and so you need to go rant, 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 on that one little spot several times. You know, with the push button, you're just gonna get that to that every single time, that to that every single time. And that may not be what you need, not for like that one cantankerous spot, that's spot weld that's not coming off. 
Uh, so anyway, yes, I like the pot better because it gave me the ability to just kind of adjust for that one little place where I got to do that from time to time. But admittedly, most of the time a push button would do the trick. So probably what I really should have done is uh, maximum in would have stayed the same is to just simply put a push button in there as well uh, that I could hit uh, for all those just full plunges up and down and then all the rest of the time use the uh, use the potentiometer for all those other things. Problem is though is I guess I could figure that out, put like a switch between them so that this was disabled when the switch was on or you know open that switch and then you get the pot instead of the plunger switch or plunger button but uh, it this works well enough, don't really care. <laughs> that works just fine. So anyway, if you don't have yourself a spot weld shear, uh, you should definitely make yourself one. If you're dealing with recycled cells, uh, you, you take laptop battery packs apart, you take old EV packs apart, whatever it is, and you're harvesting 18650s, 21700s, 26650s, A123 cells, all that kind of stuff, this makes cleaning up spot welds just super easy, super simple, and super quick. Uh, definitely recommend that you build one of these things. Uh, I've seen people, uh, you know, basically do this, but try to 3D print it um, or use plywood. Uh, both of those things tend to be kind of flexible. Uh, they don't have the rigidity of the aluminum. Um, but I've never heard feedback about how well those work or not. I can tell you this much, this aluminum is nice and rigid, it doesn't move, it's nice and stiff, uh, doesn't flex. So yeah, uh, the aluminum definitely was the right trick. I guess you could weld this out of steel or something as well. But yeah, like here, there's no flex in it, no movement this way, everything is very, very rigid. Uh, the way this piece is bolted on here is uh, I've got six M5 screws that go through the bottom and thread inside here. So you'll need a tap for that, but that's not hard to get. And obviously I had to drill the holes. And all the rest of the holes were just simply drilled. Nothing special about it. And then tapped. So M5, M4, <laughs> you know, uh, pretty standard stuff. Nothing really special there. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, I countersunk these holes. But again, that's pretty standard stuff. Nothing here is special tools. Nothing is complicated or expensive. You should be able to build this with hand tools almost. Uh, it's not that complex to make it and to get similar results to what I have. Anyway, if you're salvaging cells, you're you know scrounging packs for cells, uh, this makes cleanup so much easier than everything else. You get really quick, consistent results. Spot welds shear off, you know, usually in like one stroke. Maybe two, uh, you know, 90% of the time one stroke is enough. The rest of the time when you got a cantanker spot weld, you might need to, you know, shear that one spot two or three times to finally clean it up. But that's it. That's way better than everything else. And the end result is the cell top and bottom is very smooth. It's very clean and ready to be re-spot welded with a new nickel. So, yeah, folks, build yourself a Mr. Snippy uh, spot weld shear. Um, super handy for battery recovery. Absolutely super handy for that. Well, folks, uh, that's it. Just wanted to do an update on the few things I've done to this thing since we saw it last, since I needed to clean up a couple cells for a little pack I gotta make. I uh, hope that helps some folks out. Take care. Talk to you later.